Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Master. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Father God in heaven, we come before your throne of mercy as your children. Before us is your word. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may speak to us through your word. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord, and grant us the minds that are able to internalize the truths that you present to us as your children. Tabernacle in our midst and direct all the deliberations at this moment. In Jesus' name we plead, amen. Our topic for the day says understanding human nature. And this is lesson three in our quarterly. I hope we enjoyed lesson two. And the memory verse for the day is found in Genesis 2 verse 7, and it reads, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. And we we'll understand that as God was breathing life, into, the human, into a human being, none existed then. And there was nobody who was there to witness what God was doing. So what am I saying? I'm saying all the theories that we are having now, all the theories that the theorists are presenting are man-formed theories. And the issue of humanity, the existence of humanity, is, belongs only to God. He was there as the creator. And since we are not there, we have to take what he says to us by faith, because he is God. He is the creator. But now there is this controversy that is coming in where we find in Genesis, the devil interacting with our mother Eve, as we saw in the previous lesson. What is the devil saying? She, he's saying, you will not surely die. When God has said, the moment you eat of the tree, you will surely die. And this controversy has been perpetrated even up to this day. You will not die you will surely die. And you know, hence we have these talks like, we change the language each and every day. You know, when I was growing up, we used to say, so and so has passed away. But that language has since changed. Nowadays, when somebody has passed away, what do we say? He has passed on. Implying that we are saying that person has moved from one state to another state. Kind of substantiating the lie that was presented by the devil to our mother, that we will not die. We will not die. We will not surely die. Uh, let me present it this way. I think we all have seen a bulb, right? We know a bulb. And for a bulb to give light, it has to be connected to the current. The current on its own, it cannot give light. The bulb on its own, it cannot give light. The two have to be brought together for us to receive light. And in like manner, so is the human body. The human body which God created. Um, Ecclesiastics says the human breath, the animal breath, they are all the same. Is it true? Are they the same? In what manner? Oh yes, we all die. We all lose life. And what is death? It is that position where we lose life. So is there a difference between animal life and human life? 
That's the question that comes into play. The difference is when God created human beings. For human beings, he took his time. He formed the woman and the man in his own image. Animals, he spoke them into existence. But for human beings, he took time to mold and shape them in his similitude. And he gave them authority over animals that he had created. So now, what is the difference between animals and human beings? The breath is the same, and they all live and die. Uh, somebody puts it in an interesting way. He says the difference between human beings. You see, when current, when we have current coming through into a bulb, it gives light. You see that? When I connect a television set to power, what does it do? It gives what? It starts playing. Or when I connect it to a radio, I start hearing sound. So in like manner, when the dog has received its breath, what does it do? It behaves like a dog. When a human being has breath, he becomes a living soul that has emotions, that can think. And that God, that's God's secret. We don't know how it happens, how emotions come into play. Yes, science has tried to explain the physical aspect of humanity. But when it comes to issues like thinking, emotions, we can hardly explain it because that is God's secret. So now, does a living soul exist on its own when the one dies? You know, we've heard people saying, oh no, when you get there, please take our messages with you, tell them we miss them, we are lonely here. And I've often said, if that was the case, I wish I were dead. Why should I remain living? when the dead are joining God. Why should I remain here? I mean, that should be the reason for every Christian to want to die. If the dying are joining Jesus, if the dying are going to dwell in the presence of the master, why should I cry? But the Bible is clear in that aspect that once a human being is considered a human being when there is the breath of life and this flesh together. When they are connected, that's when we have a living being. When it's separate, the soul does not live on its own somewhere else where it can minister. You know, if there was that power of ministering, I lost my father when I was doing Form 2. And I was saying, if he's there somewhere, and if he still has the power and control over the family, I mean, there were so many things that happened after his death that I knew that if he was there, they were not going to happen. Why did he decide to be quiet? when we was in the realm of the superpowers, where he can just speak to somebody in a dream and say, don't do that. I want you when I was still alive. Why are you doing the wrong things? But we decided to go our ways, which we know were contrary to his instructions. Was he still in control of the family? No, no not at all. You know how Endeavele man treasures his, his wealth, especially 
when he, we look at his head of cattle, oh, his cattle diminished and disappeared. Why didn't he follow them around and round them up and bring them back into the crawl if he was still in control? A loving father who decides to go away and leave his children without food and leave his children not in the custody of anyone when he knows maybe even the enemies. And let alone not even get the monies from that higher realm and say, I'll provide your school fees, my daughter. And to that end, I strongly believe the dead know not anything. They don't exist anywhere else where they observe us and monitor our movements. But yes, the devil has impressed it upon the minds of so many that, oh, please tell them we are suffering. We spend a lot of money. We spend a lot of time crying by the graves, asking if they can hear us. They do not hear a thing. They are dead. God the Creator has said, once the living soul is separated, the dead body is a dead body. It returns to the dust where it came from. And when it's returned to the dust, it's nothing but dust. And they wait there in the grave, waiting for the resurrection morning. Can they speak to us? No, they can't. Their thoughts are forgotten once they die. Their input in the family, whether we err or we do the things the right way, it's the end of it, the day they die. Their control is forgotten about. But because it's so much in our minds, I loved my dad. I wish he could be doing all things for me. And the devil takes advantage of that. And he comes and whispers, and you exactly hear your father's voice because you identify with that voice. And you say, he visits me in the night. He tells me my child is ailing. Ah. Why did he allow the second born in your family to die after he was dead? Why didn't he beg all those elders with him to say, please spare my children. They need to grow older, maybe up to my age. They die young, even as he's there as their father. Why can't he plead on behalf of his family? My brothers and sisters, the dead know not a thing. And there is nothing like the spirit is taken to heaven, but for somebody who has sinned, the spirit is, play, is in purgatory or in hell where it will, be, it will burn and burn and burn forever. The dead are in the graves waiting for the resurrection morning when Christ shall call his loved ones. And as they wait in the graves, they don't have control. They are just like somebody who is asleep. They don't even know that they have slept this long. It's only us who are living and counting the years and are saying, oh, my father has been away for the past 20, 30 years. But they are not even aware of that because they know not anything. And to that end, we can't speak to them. We can't converse with them. We can't send prayers to them. We can't plead on their behalf. The decisions that have to be made, they have to be made today. They have to we have to decide as we are living either for Christ or for the devil. That is our choice. And God has given us that freedom to make the choices that we want to make. And as he gives us that freedom, he has given us an open mind, a mind to decide for the right or for the wrong. My brothers and sisters, it is the human nature that tends to want to believe what the devil has said to us. The devil has said, you will not surely, you will not die. 
but you will be like God. And God says, the moment you, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. And it is in this vein, I want to invite each and every one of us to be wise, while least we are still existing, in the understanding that in as much as God breathed life into humanity, into a body that he had created, death is the reverse of the same. The soul, the living soul, is separated. It's not all about oxygen. I've seen people dying in people's hands. If it's all about oxygen, everybody around that place should die. I've seen people dying in the ICU who are on oxygen machines. Why listed the nurse who is nursing them who is not even on an oxygen machine remains alive. So I believe the issue of life belongs to God. It is in God's hand. And the reversal of this, of this situation, the reversal of what transpired at creation is what brings about death. And it is a mystery that we may not fully understand. And God, only God, has that mystery and understands it. And for us, we have to take him at his word by faith and live according to his statutes and take his dictates as they come to us. The human nature has believed a lie. The human nature has a tendency of wanting to follow that which excites our minds. Yes. It is so exciting to know that I'm speaking to my father who passed away 20 years ago. It is exciting to know that, oh, I spoke to my mother who passed away two years ago. But the truth of the matter is that the dead cannot speak to us. The dead know not anything. And the dead will only be resurrected at Christ's return. I beg you, brothers and sisters, to understand that a lifeless body is dead. It cannot speak. It cannot act on anything. It cannot do anything. The secret of where the soul goes, that which we want to understand, he gave it. And only him has the secret about it. It doesn't remain hovering it's not identified by you. It's not tagged to you to say, so and so, so, we see it hovering and visiting us all the time. It is my prayer that we may understand this concept fully because the lie has been perpetrated that says we shall not surely die, but the soul that sinneth shall surely die. But the soul that believes this is life eternal, that we may know him who was sent to come and redeem humanity. It is my prayer that we all understand that God is the giver of life and life only consists in Jesus' hand. May we all be blessed. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, the mystery of death has left many of us wandering in so many parts where we were not supposed to venture into, simply because the devil has told us a lie that we will not surely die. We want to commit our minds into your hand, O oh Father, that you may grant us the understanding that we need for this time when there is so much that is being taught, when there is so much that is meant to deceive our minds, speak to us and reveal yourself to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.